Hey everyone, welcome to the garage. And this video is going to be a quick one. It's going to be about Briggs primer plates with the push primer, primer bulb, uh, gasket leaking. You can't get it to work. You push the thing a million times and you just can't get it to work. And you go on the web and you find out, somebody says you put two gaskets on. You put two gaskets on, you put it on, you push the primer bulb, it doesn't work, right? What do you do? when two gasket doesn't work three gaskets don't work when, when you got it out you know a mile of gaskets so what we're going to do today to fix it is we're going to glue the gasket on. i'm going to show you what i do because there's a particular series of steps that i do um, to make sure that these things work i do it i i put it all together the way i'm going to show you and i put it on the shelf and when i'm working on these machines i got one right next to me over here it's going to need one of these um, this is going to be dry tomorrow I'm going to stick it on there. I can almost guarantee it's going to work. Even with a lot of the ones that are warped, which is very common. People over tighten these. Now, if it's got a crack in it, uh, it may not work. Um, you're going to need another one. But if it doesn't have a crack in it, and even if it's a little bit warped, um, one of the ways you can tell is that you can see screw the screw marks deep into the plastic. It'll work for almost maybe 90% of the time if it doesn't have a crack in it. So warped or not. So let's get started on this. Now we're gonna need a couple of things. And I picked up a kit a while back. It's a Panary pack um, for Briggs and Stratton. You just look it up, right, Panary. This one, I got a part number here. Um, I don't know what the part number is really. So I'll try and put this in the description because there's a bunch of part numbers here. When I looked up Briggs and Stratton, you know, six horsepower primer gaskets, primer plate gaskets, and uh, Panary. I like Panary. Uh, I haven't had any issues with them. So we need that. We need some, I like to use black RTV for a lot of things. Just standard, good old fashioned black RTV. We're going to need uh, three screwdrivers. I got two here. I don't know what I do with the other one. Small ones, the flat blades, okay. We're going to need three of them. You could do it with two, but you really need the third one, and you'll see why. And then something to push the uh, the RTV around a little bit. And I just use a Q-tip, and I pull off the cotton, and uh, I make it just so it's a little flat, and I can roll roll the RTV on there. Just get the cotton out of the way, and that's it. And we got to clean the plates, so you got to start off with a good clean plate. Let me take you through the process, and by the time we're done, um, you're going to be really happy. It's really quick. It's easy. It's a, like a 10 minute video and I'll try to include in the video is the test because I have a machine over here so I won't release the video until I do this machine and uh, I'll put this one of these primer plates on there and we'll prime it and we'll take a look at it and see what happens um, so but I, I, I've been doing it for I, I started doing this over a year ago a little bit over a year ago and I have another video on it guys and you may want to check it out I'll put the link up here it's a little bit more involved it's an older video I wasn't that really good at making videos I just wanted to get some tips out there for you guys to help you out the camera's not all that great but uh, a lot of people like it like it's actually helped a lot of people and it really it's the idea of it that's the most important thing not not the quality of the video I'll see you guys in a minute all right let's get started on this all right, everyone let's get started so I clean these things usually when they're on the machine I pressure wash the machine off as you guys probably have seen me do and then sometimes I take them off and I pressure wash them I throw them down on my cleaning pallet um, but I just cleaned this one uh, by hand and it was really dirty you've got to clean them they're, they're filthy and I want to show you is we're going to take this out I already took one out and I started scraping in there and it was blocked right so that's all grease so we got to get that out so to get the bulb out it's, it's almost always the case right if you don't start off with cleaning the inside you may not get enough pressure on pushing the bulb <clears throat> to do anything I'm just gonna stick a couple of small screwdrivers in and uh, I'm going to work it Just kind of hold the screwdrivers as best you can it's a bit of a frustrating they make a tool for this and I should really get one you know but everything costs money and the screwdrivers I have right so once you get one side the other side's going to want to you know, rock but sometimes you need a, another screwdriver 
<clears throat> to hold and stick something in there. And sometimes you can just use your finger, right? Just my finger now, and I just pull it out. Maybe all the gook in there. Right, you want to be blowing that in your carb because it's gonna try it's gonna get clogged in the passage here and it's just gonna be in the carb. So we're gonna clean those out in a bit. Let me just do this one too. And it doesn't matter if you you know you clean the outside, the stuff's in this passage. Alright, so I'm gonna get these out. Like I said, we'll hold it. Let's hold that with my fingernail. That's it. It's not hard. Oh, see the cook in there? I don't think you can see it with that camera, camera on my right. All right, let's get out my, now you could just use gum out or something. Now, sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start off with blowing some <clears throat> gum out down in there. Use brake cleaner. I take an acid brush. I do that. Now I have some cleaning solution. This stuff here is, is just some of my cleaning solution that I like to use. And here we'll pour some in there. Let those guys soak a little. It's just different chemicals that I try to reclaim chemicals. I'm just so frugal. But it helps, right? Stuff gets expensive. There we go. That works. Let's use your brake cleaner. Gum out. Doesn't really matter. All we want to do is just get it out, and then we're going to blow it. We blow away from the table. See how clean that is? That's beautiful. Now I'm going to do the others, but before I do that, I'm just letting these guys soak while I'm doing the others. I'm just going to take my acid brush. I take these acid brushes, I cut the, bris the bristles down. That's clean, right? Just to get the debris out. Yeah, there's a lot in here. All kinds of cooking. This one, wow. Let this one soak a little longer. This one is just impacted. It won't work if you. You can put twenty gaskets on, and if you're not putting any pressure out because the bulb is impacted and that little passageway is impacted, right? What do you think? You know what? Nothing's going to happen. Now you can put 20 gaskets on. This was pretty nasty too. Now I go through a lot of machines, okay? But yours could be like this, just, you know, if your machine hasn't been serviced in a long time and suddenly you want to, you know, do a nice job, you're starting to watch us you guys doing these things in the videos and you think, well, I can do it. Yes, you can, right? That's why we're here, is to help you guys, give you tips. So you can definitely do it. But there are a number of steps and things that you need to kind of go through. And uh, I try to cover a lot of that. That looks pretty good. Because if you miss a step, whenever I miss a step, it always seems to come back to me. And, and I've got a problem now, I've got to fix. 
That's ha that's happy. All right. Let me finish cleaning these, and we'll be back for the assembly. And I'll show you what I do. All right. I'm going to glue the gaskets on. But there's a particular way I do it, and I have found that works, and I've been doing this a long time. I go through hundreds of these every season, it seems like. All right, so I really like it when I get the automatic choke, because I don't have to worry about it. But I prep these out. I have a number that are already prepped out, some of which I haven't cleaned all of this yet. And it, it, most likely, if I put it on and I don't get the action I'm looking for, then I'm going to clean it. But uh, I prep these out, I let them dry overnight, and I stick them on the shelf. And then when I'm working on one of these machines, I just grab one of these, and I'm good to go. So I'll give you the tips on that next. All right, now the thankless part of the job is done. So we can put these guys back. All nice and clean in there, right? It's certainly clean enough. Now... Got to hold it like this, okay. Line up the keys again, and then stick a screwdriver in there to try to pop them back down again. If you push them here, you're gonna dislodge the the bulb, and it won't work. It's on. Done. Clean. Okay. We'll do the others and we'll get to the most important part. Okay, now we're ready to glue. And I'm just going to use some of my black RTV. Alright, so it goes like that. Now we're going to put it on the gasket. I just got a Q-tip and I took the yuck off the the fuzzy stuff off. And grab a wad. Okay, that's enough. We only want it on the bottom. And we want it around the hole. And then we're going to put it on. And press it down. Now, what I've noticed is this one's sticking up over here. They will do that. Especially when things are a little warped. Now, what you can do... Now, I like to leave them sit for a while. There you go. So I'm not going to completely locate it on that hole here okay I want it tighter down here the leak is almost always down here it's not really up by the hole all right now that we've done that we're not done all right still take a, a wad of RTVs you know decent amount enough to, to wet the have to get something on the tip like that <clears throat> and there's two places we really want or three there's this a gap right here we want to cover that and then we want to fill backfill this entire bottom trench Just like that. And make sure 
that you've completely filled it. And don't worry, just make it smooth. And we want to put a little bit along here. Because there's a little seam. And of course on the bottom, on the inside, And that's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Now I'll do the other ones in a maybe faster motion because I got to get them done. Done. That's it. <clears throat> that is pretty much a guarantee. And that's a wrap, guys. These are done. I'm going to let them sit. Probably tomorrow I'll need one of these for a machine I'm working on. And uh, so that's a wrap. All right, so we're going to do a little test, guys. Um, so I'll do the shout out in a little bit uh, to the member that suggested this. And uh, so we're going to. We're going to do a test. What's the test, Arch? Well, this is a motor I cleaned up. I started cleaning up. Pressure washer took it off of a beat frame. It's a push button prime. I just started taking the screws out. This section here is not cleaned. Um, primer bulb. I've never seen this motor run, right? And this is typically how I get my machines, and it's why I tend to glue the gaskets on. He's suggesting that we put a fresh gasket on by soaking it in hot water. And... We're going to do a test, and we're also going to give a shout-out to that, that guy that uh, is trying to help us out. So we're going to do this test. I've never seen this motor run, like I said, so i got to clean this motor up. We're going to be putting it on this body. Um, this motor's jammed. All right, it's, it's been outside, and I got it just with a carburetor. I took a few parts off of it. Um, so it was just, it, somebody pickled parts, but the body's in nice shape. And I can, you know, rush it out the door real quick. If this motor's any good, so we're going to do a test and see. Now it's the first test, right? I'll we'll do more, but let's get started. I got to clean the carburetor up, clean the motor up a little bit more. We'll spray it, mount the motor on, I'll mount the carburetor on, right? We'll hook everything up, get a blade for it. It's the same type of blade, same length. It's just actually, it's a bigger shaft, which is better. Um, 
Looks like it even has like a nice uh, E3 plug or something in there. I don't know. And we'll just clean this thing out, you know, the push prime pocket out. And then we'll soak like he says. we got to follow his instructions, okay? So we'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, so this is a different motor. The other motor was no good. Um, so I'm actually going through a lot of my stuff today. Just, you know, cleaning up, finding, you know, stuff off the floor. And like, okay, I mean, look at all that stuff over there I got to go through. I got more stuff over here I got to go through. So I'm going through parts. Scrap guy's coming tomorrow. He's bringing me a present. And I want to get some stuff for him. And I figure I'll make a mower out of it as well. Um, not bad, right? I won't make much money for the day, but you got to clean up at some point when you do what I do. Anyway, um, so the old man over at Eliminated Performance, and I'm going to give a shout out to him. I'll give another shout later on in the video at the end. He suggests basically putting the, the gasket in hot water and soaking it. Okay, so it's been soaking for a little while. I don't know. I don't know how long. I'm going to give it like 20 minutes, a half hour. I'm going to do some other things, clean up. It feels like it's getting soft. It's, I just kind of, hot water, and I put this in the microwave for 30, 40 seconds. It's hot. I, I really can't want to, I don't want to put my finger in it for too long. And again, I did my usual, guys. I picked a good one. I pulled the bulb out. I cleaned it. There was a little bit of junk and water in there. I pressure washed these along with other stuff. So I'm going to do that in a little bit. And then later, later on, uh, we'll test it. So, yeah, I guess, you know, maybe if he watches this, he can tell us how long he puts it in for. So, again, I don't know if this motor ran. I, I've never seen it run, in other words. I went through the carburetor. Um, I just went over the whole motor. It has decent compression. I checked everything else out. This, gas, this gasket or plate or whatever, primer plate, seems to be okay. Um, this is the condition I get most things in. So, and he did say if it ran before you took it apart, it should work this way. And again, the problem I have, guys, is that none of my stuff runs, right? It always comes to me, you know, garbage. I'll see you guys in a bit. We'll find out. All right, so it's tightened up. Now, I recommend I use a nut driver. I make it tight. I, and the reason for that is, is, is you don't want it so tight that you distort the plastic. So don't use some type of impact or electric screw gun. Use your hand and a nut driver. Um, so that's tight. I always tighten the inner two first because... This one I just kind of bring in and just lightly snug it um, because that's just part of the mount to here. I want to make sure I'm sealing to the carb throat first. And the next test I do is then I start, now gas is in it, so hopefully you can see it, but I look to see if it gets wet down by the throat of the carburetor. I do this up on the bench first. I'll prime it a bunch of times and let's see if we can see if it gets wet. now. I don't know, I gotta get you in somehow. Alright, that might be a good shot. Nope. I'm not seeing anything. Nope, just not seeing anything. Normally it would be wet. Nope. I see I see a little bit of movement, but it's not getting wet. Alright, we can put it down and try to start it and see what happens, but uh I don't think so. We'll give it a pull start and see what happens. Still not seeing anything. I primed it quite a bit, so. Nope. 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 Alright, let me go get my gasket set up. Okay, let's let's do this together. Alright, let me take this off. It's on there tight. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you how it primes, but I can tell you it gets wet down there at the throat of the carburetor. And it works right. And that's how I pretty much know that it's gonna work when I poke you know, bring it out here and try to do a test start. Let me get comfortable. getting closer to the end of the day so I want to get going with this all right so this is all right you could see it left a bit of an impression and again I cleaned it out it looks like it's okay and now another comment I'll make is that he said OEM gaskets so I'm assuming that means that you know he's using an OEM style gasket 
uh, from Briggs and Stratton. These are Panary gaskets. And maybe you have to let them set overnight or maybe it's a different composition and you can't do the same technique. All right, so I'm just gonna just get this one on the right started. And uh, I'll just kinda bring it in so it just touches. And then we're gonna get these nice and tight. Now this is one that I did, and it's one that I put that RTV on. See? And I'm just tightening them up with my nut driver. And I get a pretty good grip, although there is some grease on my hands and oil. And we'll just finish up with that side. Okay, done. Now, let me, let me push it. I see something happening. Yep, I can smell it too. It's starting to come out. Let's give it a shot. that's it for this one thanks for watching I hope you guys got some good info out of that it's a good tip like I said I probably do a hundred or so machines every year it could be 25 50 of them could be primer plate you know who knows how many it's a lot right that I do so I hope that really uh, will, will work for you and, and it will it should if you do it the way I showed you it, it you shouldn't have a problem with it uh, unlike I said unless it's cracked and it's just really really garbage but I would try it anyway right leave it sit overnight uh, let the RTV dry. If you rush the RTV, if you're in a rush, you got to let the RTV set up for, I don't know, give it a half hour in the open air. It's room temperature vulcanization, so it needs to be in room temperature. It's warm today and humid, and that actually helps a lot. So if you're doing it in the summer, it's a hot day. Don't put it out in the sun. I don't think that's going to benefit it any, but, you know, it's really relying on some of the moisture in the air and just the room temperature. All right, guys, so that's it for this one. Come on back. Uh, like and subscribe. Let's build the channel together. I really appreciate you guys that are subscribing out there and, of course, everybody that's watching. Leave a comment. I know not everybody, ha you know, you have to make an account to, to subscribe and, uh, and to write stuff, I think. I think you actually have to have an account to write things as well. But um, hopefully everybody gets uh, something out of this that's watching it, and I will see you guys on the next one. I got a lot of tips and tricks, and, of course, come check out one of my just general videos. Not every video I do is a tips video. Um, I like to just kind of work in the shop and do kind of stuff that I think is cool and I'm learning how to make videos and um, I think that's pretty cool. So that's that's a thing in itself. I, you know, it's easy to just to work in your shop. You could probably just leave a camera rolling. I could probably do something like that, but it would be boring after a while. I'll see you guys on the next one, all right? Like and subscribe, Archer's Garage. Yay! Do it, do it now. Like and subscribe now.